one of the tricks they used was to go to the EITI board at the time and to tell the EITI board that the U.S. was not going to require project reporting and then try to make that change at the EITI board at the same time going to the U.S. regulator and saying EITI doesn't require project reporting. So they were trying to play both processes against each other. Um, and we didn't really like that very much. We didn't really trust that. They're supposed to be working in good faith in the EITI. So that, that was really unfortunate. Um, second, they continue to say for more than four years that terrorists will use the information that they're going to disclose to target high value projects. Like people on the ground don't have access to Google, they don't have newspapers, they don't have eyeballs. The notion that terrorists would actually need this information to figure out what's high value is totally unrealistic. So they're living in like 1995, that's what they think. Um, and then thirdly, um, there was about six years or more of negotiations in the U.S. Congress on this law. Never at any time did any issue with a violation of the Constitution come up. And then once the rulemaking started, the oil lobby used the excuse of a constitutional violation of their free speech rights as a reason to threaten the lawsuit. But that never came up at all. That serious issue never came up at all in the congressional negotiations. So, They've used tricks that have frankly made us question their good faith in the EITI and made us question the veracity of their arguments.